how does Jewish law view Islamic, and we'll mention also, just because we're talking about it, how does it, how does it view, view um, the Islamic faith and the Christian faith? What was talking about it anyway? So the first thing that we have to know is that Judaism abhors idolatry and paganism. You know, before 2,000 years ago, before the onset of Christianity, you had the worst of the worst scenarios in people's beliefs. People believe in all sorts of gods, but uh, com- uh, accompanying that, accompanying the, the, the belief in multiple gods, was a whole culture dedicated to the worst things that this planet has ever seen. Killing, immorality, sac- human sacrifices, crazy, crazy things. It was a crazy, crazy world. You had to be suspect of so many different things that, thank God, in our world, in, in, in modern times and in modern countries, that we don't have to be as concerned about. So Judaism abhors idolatry and paganism because of all, just aside from the fact that it's worshiping the wrong God, just because complete with that, that culture comes all sorts of terrible practices as part of the mainstream focus of their faith. So, in fact, Judaism abhors idolatry so much that it's one of the three things that if a Jew is presented, it, we have to give up our life for it. In other words, for a Jew, if somebody puts a gun to your head and says, violate the Sabbath, we're technically allowed to do that because you save a life, save your life. If, if, if somebody's presented a gun to their head, eat a cheeseburger. It's not kosher. You're allowed to do it because you save your life. But if somebody says, if someone holds the gun to a Jew's head and says, worship an idol, bow down to this idol, the Jew's supposed to let his life be taken, bite the bullet. So that's how much idolatry is abhorred. It it completely contradicts everything that a Jew stands for. In fact, the Talmud dedicates an entire volume to how we deal with idols and idol worshippers. So where does Islam fall in that category? How did the sages view that faith? So this dilemma, this idea, was, was discussed by Maimonides, the Rambam, the famed medieval sage, and he, was, he, he talks about it in his responsa literature, and it's in response to a person named Ovadia. Ovadia was a, a, a Muslim who had converted to Judaism. And when he was learning uh, in the yeshiva environment, he was learning from a rabbi, and the rabbi was giving him a hard time about his past, saying that Muslims were idol worshippers and sort of making fun of him for his, for his past. And so Ovadia corresponds with the Rambam. It says, is that really my past? Should, the, is, is, should I feel guilty about that? Or am I an idol worshiper? And so the Rambam writes back very clearly that Islam is not considered idolatry. Here's what he says. He says, the Ishmaelites, Muslims, are not idol worshipers at all. All idolatry has ceased to exist from their mouths and hearts, and they attribute the proper oneness to God with no blemish. And if someone will say, that the house that they worship in is an idolatrous shrine, the Kaaba in, in Saudi Arabia, which before the onset of Islam was used in, in uh, pagan worship. If someone will say that those who pray there are worshiping in an idolatrous shrine as their ancestors worshipped idols there, this does not matter because those who go there today and bow there today have their hearts dedicated to heaven towards God. And the Ishmaelites today, all of them, men, women, and children, have ceased to believe in idolatry. There are mistakes in other things. However, in attributing oneness to God, they have no mistake at all. Full-on monotheism. So Islam seemed to have a a very special, uh, unique standing in Jewish tradition as far as from a theological point of view. We could talk for a second, you know, how would that apply to walking into a mosque, going into a mosque? Our Mishnah in Judaism, the Mishnah teaches that a Jew is forbidden from entering a place where worship is theologically contrary to Judaism. So how would that go with, with Islam? So some rabbis, some sages hold that even though Islam is not an idolatrous religion, it's still forbidden to enter a mosque because it's a place where Muslims invoke and glorify the name of Muhammad and read publicly from portions of the Quran, which suggests that the Torah is not true. 
Um, so according to those authorities, according to those sages, one would not be able to enter into a mosque. However, the vast majority of sages have determined that mosques are not problematic to enter from a theological, uh, for theological reasons. And this is dealt with actually extensively in the responsa literature of Rabbi Avadi Yosef, former chief Sephardic rabbi of Israel. In fact, in the 19th century, Rabbi Yitzchak, Yitzchak Elchanan Specter, who was a respected sage at the time, was posed a question by a certain group of Jewish soldiers that had fought in Russia against the Turks. So after they conquered an important city, the Jewish soldiers asked if they could have a place where they could pray. And the authorities gave them a mosque to use. And they, they asked Rabbi Specter, is it appropriate that we, that we can use this as a mosque, that we can use this as a synagogue? It's a mosque, after all. And so he responded once again, Muslims are not idol worshippers. It's clear and simple that one could make a permanent synagogue out of a mosque that was given to you by the authorities. In this regard, Christianity would be a bit more problematic, at least according to the, the Rambam's perspective. Because, again, there's many different sects of Christianity, and so it's difficult to make sweeping statements. But the doctrine of the Trinity is much more theologically problematic for a Jew, and therefore a Jew entering a church would be more restrictive than a Jew entering a mosque. Again, as far as practical application of all this and how and when and how and why to use it, um, it's consult your local rabbi. But as far as just uh, in, in theoretical terms, it would be, uh, in theory, more problematic. The Rambam, Maimonides, again, although he views... Islam as monotheistic, and in this regard, sound with Judaism, he has another responsa that seems to imply the opposite. There's a discussion in one of his, one of his letters that address the topic of teaching Torah to non-Jews. Is it appropriate? When is it appropriate? How is it appropriate? And so the Rambam writes that one is allowed to teach the Christians Torah, but should refrain from teaching Muslims. And so that seems to contradict everything that he's sort of said until now. He's, what we said until now is that Islam is monotheistic, Islam is, is very in sync with Judaism, and, and Christianity has a more, uh, a, a, a more diverse view of God than, than Judaism does. But over here we're saying that if you're teaching, you should teach the Christians and, and not as much with the, with the Muslims. At the end of the day... The reason is, is that Islam and Christianity, according to the sages, are, are seen as uh, uh, sort of breakaway faiths that each contain within them half the truth of the Torah. Meaning Islam has a very clear view of God, but rejects the divinity of the Torah. Whereas Christianity has a very clear uh, acceptance of the divinity of the Torah, but has a, 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 a different view of, of God and the Godhead. The Trinity is, is antithetical to, to Jewish thought. 